Hey everybody, welcome back to a new video's channel and today we have a look into my five most anticipated features and changes in Vue.js. Let's go! Vue has been around for more than 10 years by now and it matured a lot and a lot of functionality is already there. There are just a few little pain points here and there but there's still room for improvement. I mean, there always is. And very often we talk about shiny new features being implemented existing. In this video, I want to showcase you my top five of features that might or might not come to view, but that I would really like to see there. So uh, let's get started. There are no specific order. And of course, these are not all my ideas. There are lots of issues and even pull requests around. So we'll have a look into them, what the features do and uh, how things will work out. Let's start with feature number one, conditional props. To showcase what I mean with conditional props, let's have a look at this one simple Vue.js playground. And of course, as usual, the link is down in the description for that as well to all of the examples shown here. If we have a simple component called some component and define our props of TypeScript, we can say, very simple, with a union of objects, we have either the prop one or the prop other. So now what I would expect when using that component would be if I set the prop one, that's fine or I set the prop other, but not both. So both are not allowed to exist in the same place because that TypeScript union clearly says either this or that, right? So if you go to the example, these here should not work. Both of them, not okay, right? But we don't see any errors in the playground. Even if we have like show errors, nothing's happening. These examples here, that's the correct usage, but this one up here would be the bad one. And as you see, this works not really right now which is why this is one of the most upvoted issues that's available in Vue.js right now. While the simple example might not be that interesting, if you have, let's say, a button and decide, okay, you know what, you can mix all colors and appearances all together or types of styles, but if you have appearance outline, then you can only use color white or the other way around. If you want to use color white, that only works with appearance outline. This is something that you can easily define in a TypeScript world in a type like this, but yeah, Vue doesn't fully respect it yet. That's also why this has more than 39 upvotes at the time of recording. And of course, I also showed the example that I just showed you right here. There has been some work on that, which I'm really happy about. Of course, more and more people voicing that, uh, discussing, and eventually there are some PRs here. So there is some traction and maybe, maybe in the future we can see that maybe the next minor version. I would like that because having view even more type safe, especially on the template part, that would be extremely lovely. And to make sure that all these cases can be properly modeled. And while we talk about Vue and TypeScript, let's just uh, jump straight away to feature number two, typed event handling helpers. Now, of course, I also prepared a little playground for that. Actually, it's just an input field here. And if we say we have an input event or any kind of event, we want to call a function here, say do something, then we would define that function and say, okay, all right, we have that function, do something here. Let's disable show errors for now. Then we have in TypeScript some E, which is the event type, right? We don't want to leave it at any, and then we want uh, to have a proper type. So, well, commonly, this is just the event type, also from view itself, right? So here, if we want to do something, let's say, with the value of the target, then we can use event.target.value, or like in this case, e, but we can also type it to event. And here we say, wait, property value doesn't exist on type event target. And that's, that's correct, it doesn't work. You would have to cast this here, this target, as HTML input element. And this we would have to do no matter if it's a uh, change event or an, an input event or similar here. And then we can, of course, use that value and do whatever we want. While this works, we have to do it again and again. It's not very descriptive and it seems like, okay, we have to trick TypeScript into things that we don't want to do here. But other frameworks such as React actually have a good solution for that. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Let's have a look how that would look like in Vue. Instead of having a general event type, it would be nice to have helpers such as, let's say, an input event type here, and then say, you know what, let's pass in the type of the target element. So let's say instead of casting it as HTML input element down here, we could just pass it in, and now the event would be automatically typed. But as we see, that doesn't really work because these types don't exist. What would be possible is to say, let's have um, a base type or base interface as a synthetic event that allows that syntactic and type sugar here. So we say, okay, it extends the normal event type. We have two generics, the element and the event. We have the native event, uh, the target, and also the current target to pass in. 
So that works for input, change, animation, and so on, so on, all the types of events. And for the input event, of course, we can have a specific uh, interface once again that then extends the synthetic type event. So we can just say this is another interface here. And of course, we can now pass in the HTML input element as generic for that element T. We can further then pass the T down to the synthetic event. That's great. And here we straight away set the target to event target type and T to make sure we don't have to cast it anymore. And it's tradable there as HTML input element. Wouldn't be lovely, right? And of course, I'm not the first one suggesting that there are lots of people with experience around types. Um, so let's have a look at the PR that's open for that. Um, and maybe we'll see that in the future very soon. And the open PR is a little bit older and coming from VUE team member Carlos Rodriguez. He is basically explaining how he is implementing exactly the system we've just seen. And to be fair, I copy the classes he created there. So kudos to him in this case. Um, and it works very similar with React. So um, you have this input event or change event or similar. You would import it from Vue and then you would uh, pass in the right element as a generic here. And then everything is inferred by default. Of course, it might be a bit confusing at first and people are also not forced to use these helpers, but I think this could make the code more descriptive and a bit easier. So if that would land in the future, maybe with this API or a different one, but just with some helpers, I would be definitely up for that. And as I mentioned before, to make sure it's fully type safe in the manner. And feature number three is, well, it's a change because we have that feature kind of already, but it's not stable. And if I say unstable feature for a while, some of you might already know they've seen the warning countless times when using Vue or Nuxt um, or whatever you use in the Vue ecosystem. And I talk about suspense. Yes, as just mentioned, suspense exists. It is in use in meta frameworks like Nuxt.js and you can also use it in your own applications. And the problem is it is not stable yet. And there are reasons for that, mainly because suspense is a very complicated and complex scenario. And um, when we talked with Evan Vue about the future of you in the Deja Vue podcast, definitely check out that episode, he had to say a few words about it. Let's listen what he said. Then of course we come to the, um, wait, maybe one more thing before Weber mode. Mm. Uh, one, like qu quite some people were asking about suspense. Like I remember when we had the, uh, when you had to right. talk at uh, Vue.js Live earlier this year, you said suspense. It's uh, also a matter of writing an RFC, stabilizing it, and it will happen yeah. probably this year. Yeah, suspense is an interesting one because the RFC just takes <laughs> takes a long time to write. Uh, it's been draft status for a long time. Uh, I think at this stage, a lot of uh, can. Funny thing is, something just happened in the React ecosystem. I'm not sure how many Vue users are, are aware of it, but React 19 made a very significant change about how suspense worked and didn't even like document it very prominently. And that turns out to break a lot of assumptions in user land, like how the whole React query would just like not work as efficiently as they want it to be with this change. So uh, next day is probably also, uh, it's just like the way that React team expected they, they want suspense to work turns out to be misaligned with how the community has been using it. So I think that's the kind of the, the thing. I, we kept suspense, view suspense in experimental status, mostly because um, in the early days, I was like, I'm not sure if this is how we you know, want the API to look like, because there are some things like error handling and all that. But after all this time, I'm starting to feel like the basic use case is fine because we don't really see people raise very specific concerns or requests about how they want suspense to change. So that probably shows it's actually in a pretty good place. And also, I don't think many people, I think like, for example, it's used in, in Nuxt. It's used in, for example, uh, like uh, Trust.js, I think. Mm -hmm. And they've been all been just using it just fine. So I don't think we'll expect to go through like big API changes for suspense. It'll just likely land as none, you know, disruptively as possible. It's just gonna, one day we're just like, oh, suspense is, is unstable now. Uh, you can finally stop seeing that experimental warning in your console. Yeah. 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 I think for me, I've been like suspense. I, I dug into it a while ago, but for the most part, I've just been like, it's been like an invisible 
feature for me that that Nuxt uses internally, and like I don't really think about it a whole yeah. lot. Yeah, and I think that's that's a great way of having it. Yeah, I think suspense. Uh, mm-hmm. We were unsure about it when we implemented it because it it's it cut across a lot of different areas, like uh, keep alive. Um, Transition, especially suspense with transition, is mm. very tricky. Uh, we had a lot. We fixed a lot of suspense-related bugs over time. I think that's Teleports. kind of like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. So it's like we kind of want, we kind of put it in experimental because we know there are bugs. Like we want to take the time to fix all those bugs before we can comfortably say it's stable. So suspense isn't an easy thing to do, and yes, there's some time needed to write a full RFC to cover all the edge cases get feedback on the community. And um, Evan said it is still aimed for this year. That might be possible. Let's uh, see if that works out, but maybe with a few more iterations, it could even take until early next year. At least that's my prediction. I don't know more than you do, except from what we heard, that was the the last information we all have. So I'd look forward to have some stable um, suspense usage out there, but I also understand that nobody wants to repeat mistakes. Other frameworks did, for example. Um, And yeah, I, I hope it will come in the future, but it's already usable, of course, experimental, so it might change in behavior. Nevertheless, already pretty useful right now. And at least for me, not super high in a priority list, but still very good to see. The next thing on the list is a pretty simple thing, but it would give quite some user experience, which is vModel for details and dialogue. If you have a look at the playground and just add a details component in here with vModel, we see, oh, damn it, it can only be used in input text area select elements. Same for dialogue. That's very unfortunate because these elements are, I think, perfect to have a vModel binding straight away out of the box. Of course, you can hook it up with events on your own and wrap things. So also there, it is possible to implement already, but ideally, well, we just have it out of the box because that will improve the developer experience a lot. And this is also what Vue, Veed, and Next core team member Anthony Thu thought about it. Here we clearly see an PR that's already over a year old where Anthony submitted not only the whole feature, but of course also a docs PR and wrote a whole RFC around it. We even have a playground preview where we can see that the whole thing would work out to have a toggle here to first of all show the details collapsed and uncollapsed and also the dialogue open and closed. So I think that would be a really good feature. And as the PR is open, also ready to merge, this is very likely to come in next minor. So fingers crossed for that. Small change, but big impact because people can just use it out of the box. And also the new dialogue component, a really, really good thing if you have to work with something like pop-ups, modals, and all that, you know. And the last thing, the top five in the whole list is something that's, well, that might be a little bit polarizing. All the other features so far were like, sure, all makes sense, all reasonable. This one, we'll see. And it's very simple because most of us write TypeScript. So why not enable it by default? And of course, there is an issue around that since 2022 to say, okay, can we maybe have a compiler flag or anything to just let us omit lang.ts and allow a view to straight away assume everything as TypeScript. There have been some discussions around that. And um, all in all, I think as we move more and more towards the TypeScript world, Why not? Especially because you don't have to necessarily annotate types and with the right strictness, that seems like a reasonable change. Interestingly, Evan, you also talked about it in the Deja Vu episode mentioned before. So once again, let's hear what uh, he said back then to the possibility to enable TypeScript by default. I think one thing that might be controversial is, uh, for example, we're thinking about defaulting script to setup mode. So essentially, Without setup, it'll be, uh, it works like script setup nowadays. So we're just like flipping it around. So the other script will be like script module, which runs in module scope. And the default script is just setup. And we're also thinking about maybe uh, defaulting to TypeScript directly in the script as well. So um, this, is, this is also going to be a controversial one. So for sure, for sure we, we're going to have an RFC for that, right? So I'm, I'm actually like, initially I was skeptical about this too, but, uh, Astral actually has been doing this since the very beginning. So the, um, 
the script part in Astro components are, are TypeScript by default. Kevin actually raised this as a discussion item in the Vapor repo, and a lot of people didn't like it, right? But I think the, um, the idea behind this is um, when people think about TypeScript by default, they worry about all the extra complexity that comes with TypeScript, like configuration or like getting the types right and all that. The thing is, it all comes down to how you handle the default developer experience when you are not writing TypeScript in a TypeScript setting. Right? So if because TypeScript is syntactically a superset of JavaScript. So any JavaScript you write is actually valid TypeScript. There might be type errors, uh, but we don't have to enable, like for example, you don't have tsconfig.json. We don't have to be in strict mode. It's just going to be the most lenient type checking as possible. Anything un, unannotated is going to be any, right? So you're going to just be like writing normal JavaScript. Um, mm. If we don't tell you, you probably won't even realize it's TypeScript by default. That's the idea, right? So for people who are not into, JavaScript, uh, into TypeScript, they can just keep writing the JavaScript they like. But it actually allows us to give you a bit better IntelliSense and type checking compared to plain JavaScript. Um, right. so, so that's one thing. I, I think the other bad aspect of it is people like the explicitness, like knowing. I think the only concern that, that we have is uh, people started seeing TypeScript syntax inside a plain script tag, and they'll be like, whoa, what is this, right? Uh, some people actually have, we actually had this feature request in Vuecore for quite a long time. And people want this behind a feature flag or an option that you can toggle. But I think having an option in the current Vue 3 will be actually very confusing, right? Yeah, uh, definitely. So, but if we couple it with a major version like Vue 4, that might make a lot more sense. It's like, Oh, you're seeing TypeScript syntax in the default script. It must be Vue 4, right? Also, you're seeing composition API in the plain script. That's Vue 4. It doesn't really fundamentally change the way you would write your components. It's really just like writing less, a bit of less. Or maybe in the RFC discussion, someone will convince us, convince us like this is not worth it, you know? Yeah, what else to add? And these are my top five anticipated features or changes in Vue.js. There was nothing crazy major, right? Of course, I could have said like, oh yeah, vapor mode. Obviously, obviously we all look forward to vapor mode. We all look forward to lots of changes in maybe the view router, data loaders and so on and so on and Nux.js. But this was only focusing on the core part of Vue.js and these were the five things. So let me know, what are your things? Anything that I missed straight away that also found the category? What would you like to see in Vue.js to be fixed? Maybe one of the things on the list or something else? Um, definitely also check out the Deja View episode just mentioned with Evan. Um, actually, there are two. <laughs> and uh, the newest episode as well, some older ones, also all the videos here on the channel. And um, yeah, until then, I hope to see you in the next videos. See you soon and happy hacking.